Tech family, welcome to part three of my ultimate laptop buying guide. Whether you're shopping for this Black Friday, Cyber Monday, for a birthday, a Christmas present, or back to school, this guide has been fully updated and has you covered. Now, in part one of the guide, I covered some helpful tips and tricks that you should definitely watch that will help you save money. It also covers laptops under 800 US dollars. Now, in part two of the guide, I cover my recommendations for laptops from 800 US dollars to 1,200 US dollars. And of course, in this part of the guide, it's 1,200 dollars and above. I'm gonna break it in two parts, 1,200 to 2,000, and then 2,000 and above. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm Josh, and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video, you like what you watched, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would certainly appreciate it. Okay, let's hit the $1,200 to $2,000 price range. In this range, I really want you to get a laptop with 16 gig of RAM. I know I mentioned in a previous part of the guide that 8 gig of RAM is fine, particularly for casual users, and yes it is. However, 16 gig is going to give you more longevity and flexibility than 8 gig of RAM. Over the years, programs tend to require more RAM, and you will have the greatest chance of running future programs without any slowdowns for many years to come if you get 16. Plus, perhaps you'll get into a new hobby that requires your computer to have more RAM, like video editing. I also want to talk about the choice of screen, as it's in this price range that you'll unlock some incredible displays. The big choice here is do you go for a high resolution 4K-like screen or a lower resolution 1081? The pro of a 4K panel is that content, especially text, will appear very sharp. The con is that battery life will be substantially worse, as more light is required to push through a more pixel-dense display. My general guide is this. If you plan to do photo or video editing, I would absolutely get a high resolution display at any screen size. You really want to see the image you're working on in as much detail as possible. If you are coding, it is up to you. However, I personally find looking at lots of lines of code much easier on a sharper 4K like display. For gamers, get a 1080 screen. No gaming laptop is going to allow you to play AAA titles at 4K resolution. Plus, Premium gaming laptops in this range have excellent high refresh rate screens, which are great for gaming. For casual users, I'll leave it up to you. If you are fussy and want maximum clarity, get a high resolution display. If you want that extra battery life, you know the answer. For casual users or students, there are some phenomenal laptops in this range that are super premium devices. The new Dell XPS 9310, the HP Spectre 14, and the MacBook Pro 13. The XPS 9310 is the laptop I personally use. In this price range, you can get it with 16 gig of RAM, plenty of storage, and that insanely bright, color accurate 4K display. Although, as mentioned, get the 920 display if you want better battery life. I can't speak higher of the quality of this device. The keyboard, the trackpad, and overall feel of the laptop are all excellent. The only negative is it does get warm to the touch, which can be distracting. Also, you will hear the fans a little at times, however, it's not overly disturbing. If you want a little more screen real estate, I'm very excited about the new Spectre 14 with its slightly bigger 13.5 inch display. This laptop has what could be a stunning panel. It's a bright, OLED screen at 3000 by 2000 pixels, so everything should be super sharp and the colors will be extremely vibrant. Great for watching movies. It is configured in a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. This means you will see a ton of vertical screen space, which is ideal for working in Microsoft Word or viewing content on the web, both which go down the page. The only downside here is that you will see substantial black borders above and below movies. This laptop, like the Dell XPS, comes equipped with Intel's new 11th gen processors and can be fully spec'd up with plenty of RAM and storage. I should have a review out very soon, so make sure to get subscribed and click that notification bell. At the time of making this video though, I'd only recommend buying the Spectre 14 if you can get it with hassle-free returns, as I don't know whether it will live up to the hype. The MacBook Pro 13 is also a laptop I'd strongly consider in this price range, even though it has the smallest screen of the bunch at 13.3 inches and the biggest bezels around it, making the laptop appear larger and a little dated. That being said, Apple's macOS does an excellent job of allowing you to see the maximum amount of information you can on that small 13.3 inch display. Better than Windows in my opinion. The laptop also has decent cooling and excellent speakers. The only thing I don't like about it is I find Apple's keyboards to feel shallow and uncomfortable. Yes, I do mean their latest Magic Keyboards. They are better than the older ones and having a physical escape key certainly helps, but not as good as the Dell XPS in my opinion. If you're going to go down that path, 
trying to wait till my review on the new model with the M1 chip is out. We all know the new M1 chip is insanely powerful, has great thermals and gives the laptop excellent battery life. I'm producing a ton of content on this laptop and working on a video comparing the three laptops in great detail. It should be dropping shortly after this video, so make sure you are subscribed and have clicked that notification bell. All right, if you're a coder shopping in this price range, all three of the laptops I previously mentioned are excellent options. I'd probably lean towards the Spectre for its bigger screen size and three x two aspect ratio. However, if you do want something more tailored for your needs with much more power, I'd look at Lenovo's ThinkPads, particularly the T-Series with AMD, models T14 and T14S. These have 14-inch screens, and at this price range, you can really spec them up with AMD's powerful 8-core, 16-thread, 4750U processor, 32GB of RAM, 1TB SSD, and Lenovo's bright 400-nit low-power screen. These laptops have the best keyboards you can buy, super comfortable for coding on, and with those powerful components, you will have the best chance on a laptop to tackle even the most complex coding tasks, assuming you aren't coding for something that requires a powerful GPU, i.e. machine learning that will benefit from CUDA acceleration available on an NVIDIA GPU. Hang tight as I have a recommendation for you. By the way, the T14 has one RAM slot that is user accessible, Ethernet and better thermals. The T14S on the other hand has soldered RAM but is much lighter. If you do go for the T14 and can only afford 16 gig of RAM now, you may want to consider ordering it in single channel, soldered for now, so you can add a second 16 gig of RAM stick later on to get it to 32. The main sacrifice for the ThinkPad T-Series is that you'll get a less pixel dense display than the XPS Spectre and MacBook Pro that I mentioned earlier. If you do want to code on a larger screen and want access to an NVIDIA GPU, take a look at the Dell XPS 15 9500. That 15 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio edge to edge display really is a great option for coders and you can opt for a 4K like display to see plenty of lines of code in a ton of clarity. Unfortunately though, the XPS 15 doesn't come with an AMD CPU, but the Intel H series CPU is still plenty powerful. The XPS is a fair bit heavier than the ThinkPad, so you are giving up a lot of portability for this option. When it comes to video editing in this price range, it's a tough battle between two laptops, the HP Envy 15 and the XPS 15. Let me keep this short as I've already talked about both of these in this guide and I've done reviews on both which I'll post in the description below. The HP Envy in this price range can be spec'd up with a more powerful GPU that will make a difference for sure. The Dell XPS on the other hand is definitely a more premium feeling machine. You will notice the more accurate trackpad, better keyboard, stronger chassis and convenient USB-C charging. No matter which you buy, I'd like to see you with a minimum of a 4K screen, 16GB of RAM and a 1TB SSD. Prioritize upgrading parts you can't upgrade later on, like the 4K screen. The RAM and SSD you can upgrade after. If you do have the money though, I would try to get 32 gig of RAM. There are some gaming laptops you could look at in this price range for video editing, such as the Aero 15 with its OLED screen. I personally find the fan noise of this laptop far more disturbing than either of the laptops I mentioned, and it's a bit bigger and bulkier. For gaming in this price range, I personally didn't review enough laptops this year, so let me bring in an expert. All right, now for that budget of up to 2,000 US dollars, I'm gonna give you two choices. One, the Electronics Mech G3, or whatever the equivalent would be in your country. With this device, you get a 94 watt hour battery, an all aluminum build, Thunderbolt, a max performance 2070 Super, an eight core Intel CPU, G-Sync, Advanced Optimus, a MUX switch, great battery life when running on integrated graphics, 144 hertz, the list goes on and on and on. And through electronics right now, you'll get a mouse, a headset, and a mouse pad, very high quality products. You can see for yourself, this is a great value up to that $2,000 price point, but you might not have one of those boutique stores in your country. Look no further than the MSI GE66. Everybody loves this laptop. And for around 2,000 US dollars, you can find this with a six core Intel CPU and a 2080 Super Max Q if you look hard. But right now, for $1,800 at Best Buy, you can get this with the Intel eight core CPU and the 2070. All in all, a very nice product. And I know people personally who went out and bought this device for themselves after reviewing it 
Great machine, and I highly recommend it. I'm gonna have to go with Bob on this one and pick an Intel-based model, as we just still don't have AMD-based laptops with graphics above RTX 2060. I'm gonna have to pick the Electronics Mech 15 G3, also sold as the Neo 15 from XMG in Europe, which is what I've got here, or the Infinity W5 here in Australia. It's a chassis from Tongfang and the most impressive gaming laptop I've tested all year. The build quality feels excellent, gaming performance is above average, thermals are great, you can disable Optimus to boost gaming performance, it's got Thunderbolt, an SD card slot, mechanical keyboard, large battery, a decent screen, I could go on. It's around 1700 US dollars for the RTX 2070 model, or you can upgrade to 2070 Super for $200 more and still fit comfortably within that price range. All right, let's talk about shopping with an unlimited budget. Sky is the limit here. For casual users and students, you really can't get better than the laptops I already mentioned in the prior price range, like the MacBook Pro 13, the XPS 9310, and the Spectre 14. So my recommendations stay the same for you. For programmers, I'd really like to see you with a powerful CPU, 32 gig of RAM, at least one terabyte of storage, and a large screen to be as productive as possible. Your storage needs will of course vary depending on what you are coding. If you are working with a lot of large data sets, you will need more. Also, if you are coding for games or machine learning, as mentioned, you want to pick up a laptop with a strong dedicated graphics card. There are two paths I'd take at this price range. If you need portability, I'd go with the MacBook Pro 16. Even a year after its launch, I still feel this device packs the most power in a portable, high quality chassis with plenty of other benefits. Small bezels, USB-C charging, etc. Heck, it fits in a 15 inch laptop sleeve. If you only need occasional portability, I'd go with the Aero 17 HDR. Yes, the 17 inch one with 4K resolution. You'll be able to run that display at 175% window scaling to see an insane amount of code in phenomenal clarity. The Aero 17 also has a more comfortable keyboard than the MacBook Pro 16, but its fans do pulsate even on quiet mode, meaning you can hear them in a quiet room turning on and off, which can be disturbing. Another option that I'd consider instead of the Aero 17 is the Alienware M17 R3 with its 4K display. It will be somewhat similar to the Aero 17, however with better build quality, but a higher price tag. Both the Aero 17 and Alienware M17 will give you access to extremely powerful graphics like the 2080 Super. Oh, and before anyone says which laptop for Linux, as someone who ran Fedora on laptops for ages, I haven't forgotten about you. And I do plan to tackle that topic in the near future. In fact, I am considering adding Linux compatibility to my standard suite of tests for 2021. Post in the comments below if you'd like that. For video editors, it's the same laptop recommendations as I mentioned for programmers, i.e. the MacBook Pro 16, Aero 17, and the Alienware M17 R3. However, with some different specifications, I'd like to see you with a minimum of two terabytes of storage. Newer cameras like the Sony a7S III that I'm filming on right now can produce high quality video files such as 4K 10-bit 422. These files are massive and take up a lot of space. I'd also recommend you upgrade to the best graphics you can afford. You might ask, why haven't I mentioned the Dell XPS 17 9700 or the Razer Blade Studio? I really like the Dell XPS 17 and I bought one for myself. However, its charger does not deliver enough power when the laptop is under load. This is a big problem when video editing, especially when rendering. This will likely eat into the battery. I simply cannot recommend a laptop with this issue and that's the reason I return mine. The Blade Studio on the other hand, the keyboard is just too uncomfortable for me. It's also very shallow. And when that thing gets going, it is uncomfortably warm to the touch. Lastly, Razer power limits the CPU to just 45 watts, so you aren't going to get the performance anywhere near the other laptops I've recommended. By the way, these three issues are why you haven't seen me recommend any Razer laptops in this guide. I do have another guide comparing high-end laptops, which does include a lot of details on the Razer, which I'll link below. And now Bob, who has a rather ridiculous recommendation for an unlimited budget gaming laptop. For that no holds barred, Bob, I don't care what it cost, give me the best. Okay, all right, fine, you asked for it. How about this 10 pound Clevo X170? Not just how about this X170, this is the one you want. 10 pounds, but every single aspect of this laptop is replaceable all the way down to the keyboard. The 2080 Super, you can replace it. The 10 core Intel LGA socketed processor, you can replace it. All four memory DIMMs, Wi-Fi, four storage solutions, all M.2, replaceable, replaceable, replaceable. This is the bee's knees when it comes to laptop performance, but starting price on this is usually around $2,900. Not for the faint of heart, 
but incredibly powerful and it does not take a brain surgeon to repair or replace parts on the X170. Well, folks, I'm absolutely spent. That was the biggest video I've ever done. In fact, it was three separate videos making up this ultimate guide. Big thanks to Jared from Jared's Tech and Bob from Bob of All Trades for dropping in to give you their recommendations. I'll post links to all the laptops we recommended in the description below. I'll also post a link to the Discord server where you can get help from the community, as well as my personal Twitter and Instagram, so you can follow me for plenty of behind the scenes coverage. I truly hope you find the perfect laptop at a great price. If you want to show support for the channel, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would certainly appreciate it. Until next time, I will catch you later.